Well, as I mentioned in the monologue, we are in the final week of the regular season, and this is going to be an annual tradition. We did it last year in the final week of the regular season, and he's one of my favorite people on sports TV. Also, uh, you can see him throughout the next, I would say, uh, the next eight months and to ten months. He will be very busy as we lead up to the election in 2024. He is our friend from NBC, MSNBC, NBC Sports now, Mr. Steve Kornacki. How are you, sir? Uh, Pete, I'm doing great. Uh, it's an interesting time of year. We've got the playoffs coming to a head, and we got the political season coming to a head. So it's, We it's sure do. Uh, for the listeners who might be new to what Steve does outside of the football world, and I guess Steve is probably listening to this, like, are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. Some people know you from just Sunday Night Football, my friend. Uh, all the election stuff, we're talking Maricopa County, all that stuff where you get to the board and you say who's winning what local election and how it leads to the, uh, to the, to the final results. Kornacki's the top of the game, and Steve's been doing that for years. And then NBC in recent years has brought him in to kind of break down the playoff stuff based on his great work on all those local district elections and how that leads to it. Uh, real quick, you've got Iowa in two weeks. Are, are you on the road? Are you stuck in a lab? Where, do, where are you going? Iowa breaks down. Yeah, first, look, I'm flattered if, if they only know me from uh, the NFL or I do uh, horse racing for NBC, too. I always I get a kick out of it if people just if, if they recognize me from there instead of <laughs> politics. It's uh, this is the fun part of the job for me. So I, I love getting to do it. Um, the good news for me with the political stuff is what I do is with this big, giant board, basically what you see on Football Night in America, too, does not travel well. So can't take it out to Iowa, can't take it to New Hampshire, got to stay in the studio. So. Uh, not a ton of travel. It's really just for me. It's uh, it, you know, Iowa's got 99 counties. They're all basically squares. So it's every four years I, I get the old flashcards out and uh, start going through and make sure I know what's where. And uh, you know, New Hampshire's fun too because they do it by city and town. So you've got a couple hundred cities and town. But I grew up the, like near there, so that gives me a little bit of. Uh, home court advantage but does this uh, feel yeah. like the regular season and then when we get to november it's like all right that's the super bowl and this is kind of like you know you got to hone your chops a little bit you, gotta, you might be a little rusty after the last two years and now we're back in it like is that how it feels right now as we head towards obviously iowa in two weeks yeah a little bit i mean i think when i was looking at this a year ago we started planning this i i was thinking a year ago <clears throat> this republican primary you know would be like january to june every week there's a you know a primary that's you know could go either way. I thought it was going to be a wide open race, and it's at least right now it's not looking that way. Um, obviously, we'll see when the voters start voting in in two weeks if it changes. But yeah, it could be it could be a much shorter primary season and a much more emphatic one uh, than I was expecting. And in that case, yeah, then it's nine months of of build up to the to the big one in November. Buckle up. Uh, <laughs> Said on the show today, we we're like, welcome and happy new year, and I'm like, yes. It'll be a very interesting 2024. <laughs> we shall see how it goes. Real quick before we get into the football stuff, which everyone is listening to, and right, there was a little news nugget that like hit my timeline that made me love you even more than I love you already. Uh, this was in the midst of like the Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey like phenomenon really breaking out, and someone on the Today Show um, came out and was like, I, "I don't, I don't think Steve knows exactly who Taylor Swift is." And they came out. I think your partner even came out and said like. He's just not a pop culture guy. He's involved in that. Stuff. Is it true that you didn't know exactly who Taylor Swift was, Steve? I and I, I do not. I, what I have learned is that her fans are very intense, and I don't want to be on the wrong side of her fans. So I mean this at no disrespect whatsoever. I knew the name. I knew there was a figure in our pop her. culture who was, you know, famous and. Beloved and everything, who was named Taylor Swift. I couldn't have told you if it was an actress. Sing, I, I knew it was somewhere in that realm. I don't know. Music passed about 1985. I, I, I stopped seeing the movies. Uh, they're all, you know, action hero, you know, superhero <laughs> stuff. I, I, I don't like that stuff. You know, give me like Chevy Chase and Funny Farm or something. You're getting funny. You want Kramer so, versus Kramer. You want actual yeah. cinema. You're not getting that <laughs> anymore, know. dude. There you go. So, yeah, I, no offense. I know who she is now. I know all about her. Well, I, I really couldn't tell you many of her songs. But I know she's, singer, so. <laughs> she's big. I love this so much because we all live in our phones. We all live in our bubbles. And you're like, I think the, the quote from the Today Show host, it might have been Chanel Jones. She said, like, if you check Steve's Instagram, it's lakes, oceans, and mountains. <laughs> you're, you're not posting memes. No, no. It's, 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 my, it's my respite from, uh, you know, it's things that calm me, things that give me a sense of peace. 
Uh, perfect. Speaking of things that calm and give peace, let's talk playoff scenarios yeah. <laughs> where people are on the edge of their seat right now. I hope we can dive right in here. As we have it, we've got our seven teams on the AFC, your seven teams on the NFC, and there's not as much fluidity with the playoff pictures as recent years, I feel like. I, I feel like with our one seeds locked up, we, we kind of have some stability there. And in most cases, the three seeds, I think, the Chiefs and Lions are pretty much locked up. And then from there, the five seeds look pretty stable. We know the Browns for sure are the five seed. The Buccaneers, if they beat the Carolina Panthers, they're the five seed. But there is some ways to teams can wiggle in. There's some teams that teams can fall out. I think the most interesting scenario, if we can get right into it, can you take us through the Buffalo Bills scenario yeah. and what is at stake on Sunday night and what could happen on Saturday and Sunday that can lead that game to having even greater stakes than just winning the AFC East title? Yeah, totally right there. That is the um, – I, I think that's the most interesting and the most dramatic because, look, you know, uh, a month ago, obviously, Buffalo was buried, uh, not just in the AFC race, but, I mean, it looked like they were, I think, in the 10 spot. You know, they were in the 11 uh, spot with a 14% chance, I think, yeah. around Thanksgiving. And remember, so, so it's interesting you look at it. The same week, you had Buffalo pull out the win against Kansas City. You had the controversial penalty. They get the win, and they've done nothing but win since then. That same week – Miami on Monday night blows the 14-point lead against Tennessee with three minutes left. I think that was, what, the first time in 45 years or something that it happened. So that happens the same week, and all of a sudden you watch the odds, you track them week by week, the probabilities for that division. They've collided at essentially 50-50 now. They were, they were like 95-5 with three minutes to go in that Miami game. And so the scenario for Buffalo is, look, um, they had the win earlier against Miami, so you win this game. Uh, both teams would be 11-6. and six. Buffalo gets the tiebreaker. Buffalo gets the division. That's going to mean the two seed. That's going to mean, you know, uh, at least if you keep winning, at least two home playoff games. Um, you know, Buffalo's really, you know, come from nowhere to being, you know, in a great spot heading into the playoffs. Now, if Buffalo loses, they definitely could fall into the wild card, but they're going to need help to stay in that wild card mix. So what Buffalo would then need is either Tennessee – would have to knock off Jacksonville. Okay. Or they unlikely. Would yeah, you would say unlikely. I mean, we've seen some, you know, sure. some weird Week 18 uh, outcomes before. The other one is, you know, um, they would need uh, uh, Baltimore to beat uh, uh, to beat Pittsburgh, which, okay, on paper, you certainly mm -hmm. say is likely, but then there's the question of who's playing, who's motivated more, and, and all of that. Um, so Buffalo's, you know, it's a tale of two cities. That's all that ha that's all that needs to happen. So the the t Jaguars playing for everything have to beat a Titans team playing for nothing, and the Steelers playing for everything have to play have to beat a Baltimore team that is going to have probably eight or nine starters not even dressed. So if those two things happen, it's win and a two seed, lose and out of the playoffs for Buffalo. Yeah, yeah. fascinating. It's it's that's what I say. It's the crazy now. Miami obviously is. Locked up. Now they wouldn't get. They would fall if they lost. They would fall not to the five to the six. You say five is locked up for Cleveland, so mm -hmm. six would be Miami, and three, as you say, is locked up in the AFC for Kansas City. So Miami, it's not quite as dramatic, but it's two seed home game, at least one home yeah. game, you know, at least two home games if you keep winning, or trip to Arrowhead, play Mahomes on the road in the first round. So you know, it's not quite as stark, but it's stark either way. Uh, the next team I want to talk about is is the Minnesota Vikings because they lost that terrible game Sunday with a lot on the line. They go tumbling in the standings, and yet I wake up this morning and I see there is still a path for the Vikings to get in, especially if the Chicago Bears continue to play like they've been playing. Yeah, um, I'm going to look here. We uh, we partner with PFF Pro Football Focus and seeing what their current odds are for Minnesota to actually get in. They have met. Three percent. <laughs> Let's go. No, so, it's not point three. It's 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 three. They are of all the teams that are still alive in some way for the playoffs. Minnesota is the longest shot of any team currently alive. So yeah, beat Detroit. Now, first of all, the way Minnesota's playing, you got your doubts. Mm -hmm. Detroit's probably going to be angry. I'm not sure their motivation level in terms of seeding, but I'm thinking they're going to be a little angry. The coach, Dan Campbell, he used the quote, controlled fury. Yeah, that's how they so feel right now. That's a good that's, one. You're facing controlled fury. Uh, <laughs> you, then you're going to need uh, Green Bay to lose to Chicago, like you say. Uh, Chicago's playing real well right now, but Green Bay you know, must win game and look good certainly on Sunday. You're going to need Seattle to lose 
to Arizona. Hmm. And I think that's where it starts to really now look. Arizona just pulled off just a big beat the win. Eagles. Yeah. Who knows? And Seattle's a Seattle can be a weird team, so you would need that. And then you would also need Tampa Bay or New Orleans to lose. Tampa playing Carolina, uh, and then New Orleans has that game against Atlanta. So one of those two would have to lose. If all of that happens, then Minnesota could still get in with that last wild card spot. Okay. How about Seattle? Do you have that handy? What do the Seahawks need to get back into it? A heartbreaking loss to the Steelers on Sunday. Yeah. I mean, so it's basically they need, now they need Green Bay to turn around and lose. Okay. They need to win, obviously. And then they need Green Bay to turn around and lose. um, And they can get into that, you know, into that seven spot. So So they're they're cheering for the Bears. And last year, Green Bay on your network on NBC, Green Bay had everything to play for a playoff spot, and the Lions were already eliminated because the Seahawks had beaten the Rams. And what do you know? Jared Goff, the Lions, they come into Lambeau. Can Justin Fields do that and now give Seattle hope? Because I would think Seattle beats Arizona, and if they're winning, they're they're watching that clock closely. Can that's not that crazy a thought? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just yes, we saw it. We saw it. Uh last year and you know i don't know between the uh, philadelphia and tennessee games you know you, you see uh uh seattle put themselves in the same spot they needed the last minute long drive they got into two got straight him. games to get back into playoff mix maybe two straight years they could get the kind of unexpected assist from the team you know out of the playoff picture all right do you want to go through the afc south situation a little bit because it is a little complicated we know there's a winning in game on saturday night between the Colts and the Texans, but it's not for the division. It could be for the division. Right. Why don't you explain it? Yeah, it's interesting because in in some ways, right now it's the three-way tie there uh, in, the, uh, in the AFC South, uh, and Jacksonville has all the tiebreakers over both Indy and Houston, but the winner of that Indy-Houston game is going to come into Sunday in better shape than, than the Jags. At 10-7, and seven, either one of them, all they have to do is get to 10-7, and seven, and they clinch a playoff berth. Whether it's a wild card or the division title is then going to be settled Sunday in the Jacksonville-Tennessee game. If Jacksonville drops that game to Tennessee, then the winner of Indy Houston wins the division, gets the four seed because they'll have leaped. You know, Jacksonville yep. will be nine and eight, and then you know ten and seven will get them in. So um, uh, the the scenario there, obviously, for those teams, you just you want to win, and you would hope Jacksonville loses. But even if Jacksonville doesn't lose. You are in the playoffs now. Jacksonville, if they lose, yeah, can they? Still they get could. In? They could fall. Now they're nine and eight, and they could yeah. fall into that wild card pool. And they would need uh, two things to happen. They need Baltimore uh, to beat Pittsburgh because Pittsburgh's hanging around that wild card race. Okay. And then they would. This one's weird, but they yeah. would need Vegas to beat Denver. Denver. Two we teams that. that are out of the playoff picture right now. But it's because right of now. interconference record. Well, yeah, what would happen is if Denver were to win, you know, you get to 9-8. and eight. Denver's not making the playoffs no matter what, but yeah. Denver would enter into at 9-8 and eight a very complex tiebreaker. We already yeah. know Denver would lose the tiebreaker. But they'd all be 9-8, and eight, so they're still in the tiebreaker, and but it, they're it, eliminated from the playoffs. Denver's presence in the tiebreaker would screw it up for Jacksonville. So, so interesting. Yeah, so Jacksonville is going to be cheering for, if they can't get it done against Tennessee, which is obviously the easiest path, they're cheering for the Raiders and they're cheering for the Ravens. They're going to need both of those to happen. Not to put you on the spot here, but if the Colts or Texans lose on Saturday night, are they mathematically eliminated or can they still somehow find a wild card spot if Jacksonville gets what they need to be, or doesn't get what they need? Oh, this is in the weeds. Yeah. Let's, Let's just, is there, I just don't know if it's a, if it's no, a I'm, winner I'm, in. You know? I'm pulling out. I think this is a I'm, – I'm going through like 100 pages so right here. Good, but I got a, I I got a fun one for you here. Um, yeah, basically, uh, there is the – I'll give you the odds. So, again, this is from our friends at PFF. Okay. This might be a good way of, of looking at it. The best path to the playoffs, obviously, for Indy and Houston uh, is, is to get that division win. But they each have – I can give them to you here – Houston – Right now, the odds of getting a wild card, they have a 12% shot at picking up the six seed. Uh, they have a 14% shot at picking up the seven seed. Indianapolis, a 13% shot at the six seed, and a 14.5% shot at the seven seed. So, you know, they do, they do essentially, if you add those two together, the division and the wild card possibility, they're each floating around 50 50 to make the, uh, uh, to get in the playoffs here. Okay. Okay. So it's not so crazy. All right. 
Uh, Pittsburgh Steelers, it's kind of a simpler path. They're going to need a little help, but how do they get in as they're on the outside looking in right now? Yeah, so uh, Pittsburgh, and I'll call this one up too here. Um, look, we, we talked about the scenario with the Ravens, uh, the, the question of motivation. You just got to gotta get that win um, to get you to 10-7. and seven. Um, You then need Buffalo to lose. Okay. So that's because the, they would get that tiebreaker. And then so, they're in. You know, yeah. Get a get a loss there. You know, your ten and set. Well, you need Buffalo to lose, uh, or the other place they could get into trouble here. Uh, uh, no, that's with a loss. Yeah, with a yeah, win at ten and with a win at ten and seven. Yes, because then Buffalo would have ten and seven. Yep. Yeah. And you got have, that Indy Houston winner, and you're you know. The longest shot is the Vikings. What's uh, the fun, the most fun and complicated scenario you've got there that you've had to go through, or that maybe you could present uh, to us? I think well, I think it is the Vikings because they're we have three percent. I mean, and just looking at the odds we give to every team here, there's nobody else who's in the mix who's who's less than about a quarter. I think it, the uh, the NFC South is interesting just because you know Let's Tampa get into had it. the chance. Yeah, Tampa had the chance to lock it up, and now you got. Eight and eight Tampa, eight and eight New Orleans, seven and nine Falcons, and the Falcons playing the Saints, you know, in, in Week 18. So, uh, Tampa, look again. This is one of those on paper. They're yeah. playing Carolina. But, Just beat Carolina, win the division. Um, but if they slipped up, then New Orleans, uh, well, then the winner of that New Orleans Atlanta game gets the division. Obviously, New Orleans would get it if they won. They'd be nine and eight. They'd be the only nine win team in the How division. How would Atlanta get it? They would sweep New Orleans. So Atlanta then it would, Atlanta would be eight and nine. New Orleans would be eight and nine with that loss. And Tampa <laughs> would be eight and nine. And if they all finish at eight and nine, Atlanta's actually going to win that tiebreaker on the division record. Right? Actually, I think it's the no. It's not the division record. It's the combined the record of the three teams when yeah. they played each other. So Atlanta at eight and nine would get that. And the other kind of interesting. You know, kind of long shot scenario there is New Orleans. If Tampa wins and New Orleans beats Atlanta, New Orleans at nine and eight, they like they're like third in the pecking order. But could they move into the wild card? Could they get a Green Bay loss? <laughs> could they get a Seattle loss? And huh. at nine and eight, could New Orleans suddenly be alive to make it not as the division champ, but to make it as a wild card? And could that NFC South that we've kind of penciled in all year as a one bid uh, division, could they produce two? So you're basically saying the Vikings need three things to happen. The Saints need two, like whatever it is. The Saints need one less thing. The Saints are above the Vikings as long as they win and they get the same things happen. The pecking order is basically Green Bay right now. It's Green Bay's to lose. If Green Bay loses it, it's Seattle's to lose. If Seattle loses it, New Orleans enters the picture. If they lose it, then you're looking at maybe it could default to the Vikings. And if you're a Falcons fan, all you need to do is worry about winning and somehow Carolina pulling the upset, and then you're in the playoffs as a division champion. You get a home game. You get a home game. You get a home that's playoff game. At 8-9. and nine. Yeah. Great. All right. So that's one side of football fandom, and everyone's doing that. There's another side watching the draft order. This isn't your, <laughs> this isn't your expertise usually. We don't, they don't bring you on NBC to talk draft order, but yeah. it got really interesting this year. Because of the quarterbacks that are involved. And if you know how the last few seasons have ended on week 18, the draft order has shuffled you know, tenfold based on crazy results and what we think are meaningless week 18 games. But then it kind of shapes the future of the NFL based on where these quarterbacks go. Uh, let's look at this draft order right now as number one is locked up with the Carolina Panthers. Number two is the Washington Commanders. Now you would think with the Cowboys having to win this game and win the NFC East – and the Commanders having nothing to play for except pride that the Cowboys would win. However, if the Commanders lose that set, if the Commanders win, let's go through the motions here and see if the Commanders win and they do not have the number two pick, who can get the number two pick because it's either Caleb Williams or Drake May, and those guys are going to be outstanding NFL quarterbacks. Yeah, so this is fun. I got my uh, I got my spreadsheet up right now. You got currently for the two spot. You got a three way tie. As you say, Washington, who right now controls that tiebreaker. Can we explain you, what those tiebreakers? Yeah, different... oh, it's also right. This is the weird tie. So this is great. It's not head to head. Right. Well, it could end up being head to head, but okay. it starts out at strength of schedule. That's the it's number one tiebreaker. Yep. It's what's the record of your opponents and <laughs> the worse the record of your the combined record of all the opponents you've played this year is the better you get draft position. That seems backwards, doesn't it? Yes, but that is how it, how it goes. So <laughs> if you look right now, the uh, Washington 
it's it's basically it's by one game. If okay. you add up the wins and losses of all of the Commanders opponents this year, the Commanders opponents are 140 and 132. Okay. And they're 4 and 12 right now. The Pats are 4 and 12 right now, and the combined record of all their opponents this year is 141 <laughs> and 131. It's going to change So though. this is a it now and, and then also the Cardinals are tied at 4 and 12, but they're it's they're what, what's the number here? They're they have a much stronger their opponents uh, are much better this year. Th- yeah, any tie with the with the 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 only way the Cardinals get the the top pick here is if they lose next week and both Washington and New England win. They have to be okay. alone at four and thirteen because they're not okay. winning any tiebreakers. Their, their schedule is too strong. <laughs> so weird. Right. It's a weird one. But that Washington New England one is interesting because the one game between them. So you look at now is New England going to lose to the Jets if it's Belichick's you know final game in New England you know we it's don't just know the Jets. is hey. he gonna is he gonna really want to you know t- well, okay but let's say they do yeah let's say the Pats lose it let's say Washington loses it so you got two at four and thirteen how is that uh coming how is that um uh a strength of schedule going to change the big swing game to watch there's a couple that come in but the biggest one to keep an eye on by far, is Atlanta, New Orleans. Go on, uh, I okay, love so this, dude. New England played <laughs> New Orleans this year, right? And Washington thirty-four played, nothing blowout game. <laughs> and I Washington it. played Atlanta. Yep. So it's it's a key swing. If New Orleans wins the game, the Patriots in their strength of schedule get what they don't want. They get another win for their opponents, and meanwhile, for Washington, they get another loss for their opponents. Because that's that's Atlanta losing, so the Pats really want if they're playing the draft game. The Pats really want Atlanta to beat New Orleans, <clears throat> and Washington really wants New Orleans to beat Atlanta. They want the team they played to take a, another loss. And the interesting thing is, there's a couple others that play up, but let's just stay with that one because if that yeah. if, if the Pats get what they want there, um, and let's say everything else kind of works out evenly, it wouldn't have to, but let's just say it does, and the, that would mean that Pats would move into a tie in strength of schedule with Washington. And if it ended up tied, strength of schedule, that, is, pardon me, is when head-to-head comes in. And this is the opposite of every head-to-head you've ever wanted because this is where the loser of the head-to-head doesn't get the pick. The loser of the head-to-head uh, doesn't get to, uh, the loser yeah. gets the pick. The winner doesn't. So Pat's played Washington. Pat's lost to Washington. I don't really love this. And it comes back to bite Washington <laughs> because it gives the Pat's. The number two seed. So there's a real shot that the Patriots get the number two overall pick, even if Washington loses and New England loses. Yeah, there's well that that it's not automatic with that Atlanta New Orleans, but uh, a couple others come into play. But that's a huge one. If that happens, if New Orleans loses, uh, excuse me, beats Atlanta, and both pe- the Patriots and Washington are four and thirteen, at that point there's a real chance. And I mean, some of the other games to keep an eye on. Uh, let me see. I wrote them down here. <laughs> I mean, for instance, that could affect this because a lot of there's a lot of common games between these teams. So there's not many that really matter on the schedule, but like Denver and Las Vegas, okay. right? So Washington's played Denver and played Vegas. Pats have played them both. So Patriots would want Denver to beat Las Vegas because that'd be this. another win in Washington's column Got instead it. of a loss. So that that's an important one. Another important one is Chicago Green, Green Bay. Bay. Because Washington's played Chicago. New England hasn't played either one of them. But, you know, obviously Washington is a Green Bay fan because that would get them another loss in their column. Indy Houston is an important one. Pats played the Colts. So Pats are cheering for Houston. Again, if they're doing the draft thing, yeah, Pats yeah. are cheering for Houston to beat the Colts because that could give them another loss in the loss column. Um, and uh, I think I had one more here. Oh, Baltimore, Pittsburgh. Yeah. yeah. So the you know, Pats having played Pittsburgh. The Pats are cheering for Baltimore to knock out Pittsburgh. Right. So there's there's basically five games that have some that could affect the the uh, strength of schedule between Washington and New England. There's only one that involves a team that both teams have played this year. That's Atlanta, New Orleans. Really quick, two more teams that I'm going to let you go. Is there a chance the Giants can get the number two overall pick? <laughs> a chance, but it's uh, it's it's fractional. <laughs> um, okay. So for, it involves first of all, you got to remember that. Uh, you know, Arizona is sitting there, you know, playing a desperate Seattle team. Yep. And even if Washington wins, and even if New England wins, you're still, if you're a Giants fan, you're going to need Arizona to win as well. You're going to need all three of those teams okay. to win. Now, if they do, Washington does, uh, the Giants, excuse me, 
do enter into that strength of schedule mix right now. Uh, their opponents are a combined 139 and 133. So they're actually yeah. you know, it's a game weaker, but in this context, a game better than Washington right now. When it comes to that, uh, when it comes to getting the two seats, so now that again, there's some common games there, yeah, and could, things are going to change, change in Week right. 18. Yeah. So, the, so there would be, but yes, if if Washington loses to Dallas, if New England loses, uh, excuse me, if Washington beats Dallas, if New England beats uh, uh, the Jets, and if Arizona beats Seattle, and the Giants lose, then the Giants enter into a tie with those teams, and their strength of schedule would give them a shot. Unbelievable. Last one. The L.A. Chargers, they have gone from being a Super Bowl favorite for the season. Could they end up with the number two pick? So it's it's a similar scenario here, but the strength is so right now the Chargers combined opponent record is 143 and 129. Okay. So you could it would they need they'd probably want the Giants to win. Uh, you know, they, they, they wouldn't want to be in a tiebreaker with the Giants. And they're going to – they would beat – if they could get into a tiebreaker with Arizona, uh, their strength of a, a schedule would, would, would break in their favor with Arizona. To catch New England would be tough. You know, they're, they're two games up there. To catch Washington would be – so there is a scenario for them. Um, but, it, you know, it, again, it involves – um, they're going to need some breaks on common games in on on a unique games, I should say, in the uh, strength of schedule, uh, and they're going to need Arizona to win. My big takeaway from this is a revelation that the Patriots, despite thinking all their fans thinking they ruined any chance at Drake May when they beat the Steelers, or they ruined any chance when they won on Christmas Eve and beat uh, the Broncos. My revel- that hey, you could just take care of business, lose. See Washington lose, that's okay. And if they need New Orleans or they need Atlanta, they need Atlanta to they, win, right? Right, because they played New Orleans, so they want yep. New Orleans to take a loss. And Got it. Washington played Atlanta, so they want that to be credited as a win in Washington's column. I, how, it, much do the, how much are the Patriots, how much is Bill Belichick willing to lose to the Jets, I, I guess, is the first, I know. Is the first question there. But yeah, I don't think so. They've got 15 straight wins, and Belichick hates the Jets, and they're so prideful as a franchise. I don't see them losing unless – the Jets just somehow put it together. But based on what they've done Thursday night against Cleveland, I don't see that either. Hey, real quick before we go, I want 90 seconds to a minute. Tell me about Humboldt County and how it's looking out in Iowa right now. <laughs> um, it, the, uh, go to work, have, Karnacki. Do your thing. Have, let me put it this way. I don't have county-to-county county polls in Iowa, okay. but our last poll of Iowa, which we do with the Des Moines Register, I'll give a plug to them. They have the best by far poll in Iowa. <clears throat> had Trump ahead by 40 points. So oh, I imagine wow. he's ahead. Okay. okay. I imagine he's up in all 99 counties in Iowa right now. But um, Is yeah, there a debate are. beforehand? Is Vivek yeah. going to get on that stage? He, they just announced uh, it looks like he's not. Vivek's uh, out. So it looks like you're going to have a Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis debate. See, they haven't seen Christy the gone? so far. Not meeting the threshold. Okay. Not meeting the threshold. So, and no okay. Trump there. <clears throat> and... Uh, Here's, here's the plug. Uh, the Sunday morning before yep. the caucus, this is, is going to be the Sunday morning of January 14th, yep. uh, NBC News has a partnership with the Des Moines Register, biggest newspaper in Iowa. They have their poll. This goes back decades. They have the best poll of that state. Everybody looks for it on the day before the caucuses. It's historically been very accurate. We're going to release it with them, the Des Moines Register, that Sunday morning before the caucuses. So look for that poll as a big clue heading into caucus. All right, I need a time because I got wild card weekend that weekend. I'm going to be sucked. I'm going to have, I'm going to, what time is this? I'll meet the press. When You're going to love it. 6 a.m. <laughs> yes. 6 a.m. Eastern weekend <laughs> yeah. hour. I believe our, that's what we're looking at. Yeah. Our updated poll. Uh, Steve Kornacki, you are the man. Good luck. Not only this weekend on Sunday. Are we going to work Saturday too? Probably, right? Uh, yeah, this is this is pretty much going around the clock these days. Yeah. Yeah. So Saturday night he'll be doing the football. Sunday we're doing the football, and then he'll be doing Iowa, and of course all the election stuff. Steve, it means so much when you join the show, and I I just really appreciate the friendship that we've begun. Uh, just based on this stuff, I love it. I'm a numbers wonk, and I love hearing you talk it. I, I love talking two seed in the uh, uh, second pick in the draft. No one else. Completely. Can. All the terminology is reversed. I probably confused it a hundred times, but this was fun. Thanks a lot. You did great. Thank you, Steve.